All right, welcome to the next video in our series in AP Computer Science, Coding in Java. This is in our Objects and Classes category. We're talking about the equals method, and we're talking about the keyword instance of, which is a Java keyword, very useful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get us to focus just on the animal class for right now. And let's talk about the equals method. So um, we know we can have uh, a couple of strings. I'll have string A is high and string B is hello. And if I want to know they're the same, you know, maybe the I'll make a boolean called same, I can check. Um, the mistake that students often make is they want to know if A is equal to equal to B. You know that this compiles, but we're not actually confirming whether or not we have uh, two words that are the same. A equals equals B is going to check to see if we have the same address in memory. And this is an unreliable way to compare two non-primitive values. We save the uh, operator equals equals just for primitive values. So if I want to know if two strings are the same, I have to say a dot equals whoop, a dot equals b. This is the official way to do it. This would correctly return false right now because uh, a and b are not the same. a is high and b is low. I want to observe when I say a dot and I look up all of the methods that are available to me, I notice most of these come from the string class, right? Char at, string, code point, whatever that is, string, uh, compare to, we've done, contains, we've done, and so on and so forth, ends with. But as I go down this list, I go down, I go down, I go down, I start to see a few that are not of the string class. Uh, oh, of course that has uh, the string class, but anyway, uh, for example, I have the method notify which comes from the object class. I have, there was another one above. I have weight. Uh, I've overloaded weight. There's multiple forms of weight. And so what we see here is that all classes inherit from this other class called object. And we can, I think we can make an object. Let's try it. Object O equals new object. Does that compile? Oh, hooray, it does. Yeah. So this is, this is like the ultimate grandparent. This is the super class from which all other classes descend. And when we go look at what are the methods available, there are uh, a selection of methods in here. For the purposes of AP Computer Science, a beginning Java programmer, I really only care about two, two of these methods. Two string is important to me. We know that if we want to quickly and easily convert our object into some characters that can be useful, that um, a two-string method is handy. If I try to print an object, system.println will automatically go find the two-string method for me, which is really cool. Um, but the other one, the one that we're here to talk about today, is equals. So it turns out all objects already have an equals class, and I can, I can prove it to you. Let's say I had, um, you know, Animal al equals new animal. Uh, again, I've I've removed everything from the animal class. We're just using that default constructor provided by Java. Then I'm going to say animal Bob equals new animal. We got Bob and Al. If I wanted to check, hey a l dot. Well, I've got age and name uh, that comes from animal, but then I've got all this other stuff that comes from the equals uh, comes from the object class, one of which is equals. And look at, if as I look to, let's see, can I get the, how do I expand the, okay, we're gonna call that good. Um, equals says it'll take as an argument anything that's an object. Well, if everything is inheriting from object, then everything is a object in terms of Inheritance, anything we create, a string is an object, an animal is an object, a dog is an object, a print stream, a scanner, and so on and so forth. So what that means is I can actually uh, ask if Al equals Bob, and this will compile 
But the problem is this doesn't do remotely what we want it to do. Um, the equals method defined in object uh, is designed a particular way and in no way um, does the uh, it, the object class does not know how to define equality for an animal. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, how do we define equality for an animal, right? Is it a matter of, um, is it an animal that, just two animals with the same name, does that make them equal? Do they have to say have the same name and the same age? This is a choice we get to make whenever we define one of these helper classes. Um, we get to say what it means to be equal. So... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to define an equals method in the animal class. This is our uh, super class. We're not going to interact with dog for the moment. So I'm just going to say public. The return type for this is always Boolean, right? Uh, if I want to know if something equals something else, that's going to return true or false. For example, Boolean same equals, right? The result of this equals method call should be stored in same. All right, so public equals. Now you might think that the correct thing to do is to say uh, check for equals animal A. And I'm just going to say uh, return false so that we are returning a boolean. And you'll see that this compiles. But what we really want to do is we're trying to override objects equals method. The reason we want to do this will become easier to appreciate as time goes on. But the short answer is this. Um, I can define, there's, there's nothing wrong with defining an equals method that takes another animal and correctly evaluates whether it returns true or false. However, there are other methods, there are other techniques in Java that count on using the equals method inherited from the object class. Uh, it, is, it is trying to make sure that it sees not just animal here, but we want to build it just as it is in the object class. We want this to be object O. And it, you will see down the line that your equals method just works better with pre-existing Java libraries if you choose to do it this way. We want to replace the equals method that we get, right? If I didn't do this, if I said um, animal, animal, I'm going to call this other, then when I go to check what Al can do, check it out, Al ends up getting two equals methods. It gets the one from object, which takes an object as an argument, and then it gets the one that I defined in animal. We want these to be the same. We want to have one method that replaces, that overrides the object method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say object L. So we're happy to do this. We're happy to put in the extra work, but right away it's going to come with some baggage. So let's say I choose to define equality just means you have the same name. Well, shouldn't I just be able to say return my name? I could say name, but just for the sake of clarity to make sure I'm talking about a field, I'm going to say this.name. Return this.name, uh, and it's a string. So I'm going to say dot equals o dot and I go looking, yeah, let's get rid of this. I go saying, okay, well, I'm gonna be past another animal. Uh, so it's gonna have a name. I go looking for the name of the animal field and I realize it's not there. And I'm thinking to myself, well, hang on, I'm only gonna test equality from an animal to another animal. So why can't I find the name? And the reason is this parameter is an example of subclass parking. What we've done, object, uh, I'll call this object p equals new animal. We've gone and taken an animal. This is the animal that we're going to pass as a parameter to the equals method. We're taking an animal, we're parking it in an object spot. What that means is, it, yeah, it's an animal, but it only has access to its object stuff. It can only do object methods. It only has access to object fields. So what we need to do, um, if you this is confusing, go back and look at the video on subclass parking, which is a term I use in my classroom to mean when I park a subclass of a particular other class into a spot that's for it. The restriction is I, I can't get to my animal stuff. I can only do object things. I can do them, I can do object things like an animal, but I can still only do object things. So the solution is we have to do two things. We have to check, oh, uh, we have to check the parameters type to make sure it's the right type then we have to cast O to the correct type. Essentially, we're going to change its 
access. We're going to change its permission. So to check the parameters type, I'm going to use this keyword called instance of. So I'm going to say, hey, look, if O, which is my parameter, if O instance of what am I animal? If O instance of animal, that means we've got the right type. We just need to change it, right? By the way, if this isn't true, think for to yourself for a second. If if the thing I was provided is not an animal, I just need to return false, right? If I tried to compare if an animal and a scanner are the same, well, yeah, that code will compile because technically I can take any object. Um, but if it's not an animal, I need it to return false. Okay, so that takes care of the what if they're not the same type. All right, if they are the same type, well, I got to go get at the name field of... I gotta get at the name field of this O object. And right now, this thing has forgotten that it is an animal, or it should be, if we've made it to this part of our code. So how do I cast O to the correct type? I'm gonna say uh, animal other equals, and I'm gonna cast animal. I'm gonna cast O to an animal. Very important here to recognize that a lot of folks think, oh geez, Casting, does that mean I can just change the types of something? Can I cast a dog to a cat or a cat to a dog? And the answer is no, you can't. Uh, in fact, if you declare um, an animal object, I can't legally cast it to a dog. The only way this works is because I've confirmed that O, which was my parameter, actually is an animal. Because I took it in from a spot that says, just treat me like an object, it has forgotten that it's an animal. Even though it is, it's not being allowed to behave like an animal. So by creating a new variable uh, and taking our parameter and promoting it, now I have access to, I can compare my name, I can compare the name of the other. So, um, uh, so what we would do is we would say uh, return, and I'm gonna make some room here so we can see it in our code return this dot name, that's the name of the object calling equals, this dot name dot equals, and then I'm gonna say other dot, and here we are, we've got access to our animal stuff again, I see age, I see name, I see this equals method that I'm now defining, and then all the other things that I inherit from the object class. So I'm gonna say other dot name. Okay, and now this works. So let's, let's make an example. I've got animal Al, animal Bob. Um, I've got no constructor right now, so I have to manually set their names. That's kind of annoying, but let's just do it. All right, this one will be Albert. And just to show that this works, I'll say Al, not Al, Bob dot name, also gonna be Albert. And then I will print, does Al dot equals Bob. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and run this code. It should return true. And the reason that works was Bob was the object, excuse me, Al was the object calling equals. So Java says, all right, Al, what are you? Oh, you're an animal? Okay, I'm gonna go to the animals class. I'm gonna go looking for an equals method. Oh, check it out. This method overrides the equals method. So I'm gonna ignore how object would do equals, I'm gonna do it the way that you've defined it here. All right, it says as a requirement, you must get an object. What did you pass me as a parameter? Well, you gave me a bob, and all things are inherited from object, which means everything is an object, so this is acceptable. You've passed me an object, we're ready to proceed. Then we check, hey, parameter, are you an animal? So it goes and looks and sees, all right, bob is an animal, we're good to go. So then it says, we're gonna make a new variable called other, and we're gonna be like, hey Bob, you have forgotten that you're an animal because I passed you through a parameter that just required you to be an object. We're gonna go ahead and re-promote you back up to your original full animal standing by casting you right here and assigning it. And now we can go ahead and say return this dot name dot equals other dot name. And this just uses the equals method provided in the string class, right? I'm saying, hey, is my string the same as your string, and it works. If I tried to do something else in here, if I tried to say, uh, wow, that is not even close, string 
x equals hello, I can try to pass this in here, and what's crazy is this is going to compile. And the reason it compiles is the equals method says, yeah, I really don't care what you give me. As long as it's not primitive, as long as it's an object, I'll accept it. And what happens now is we passed in a string. The string failed this if statement, right? O instance of animal returned false. It was an instance of string. And so that doesn't work. Uh, and then the other example I'd like to bring up is, let's say we've got Albert and Robert. And we'll change this back to Bob. Well, again, it compiles because we've got an animal calling equals on an animal. Animals are object. Great. We head here. We check. Is O instance of animal? Awesome. It is. We're going to re-promote Bob back up to being an animal so that we can have access to his fields. And then we check, hey, is your name equal to this other name? And it's not. When we go to run this, you should see it's going to be false. So that's how to use uh, when you're defining a class you will find relatively soon that it's going to be valuable to define an equals method in that class. To do that, you're going to want to not just make your own, but override the equals method inherited from the object class. To do this, we use the instance of keyword, which allows us to verify the type of something that has been passed to us. So if we need to check and see, um, not that it was an object, but is it a subclass of an object, one specifically like animal, or something else that we've defined, then we can use this casting, this explicit casting right here, to promote it and get access to its fields. And that's how to do the equals method and instance of. Thanks for watching.